Okay, so in this video I'm going to demonstrate the process for outputting the EDL files and the offline edit, ready for the project to be brought back to full resolution and conformed in Nuke Studio. So you can see I've got a I've got Premiere open here, and this is essentially the uh, the edit uh, for this particular project. So if I just uh, stretch out the timeline a little bit, we can see that the timeline is actually distributed over over three video tracks, and it has a single audio track with two channels. Okay, um, just some some editors uh, like to uh, use this particular convention, and if we take a look at this, we can kind of see how why they've done this. Uh, we can see that they've um, they've laid the green screen over the top as a, a separate track, um, and in this particular case, there's two pieces of green screen. There's the um, there's the green screen of the captive character and then the captor uh, in, in front. So this would never be part of the actual edit and this would not be the way that these would be composited but the editors providing these in this format to give you to give the um, to give the conforming process a little bit of reference. Okay so certainly in terms of outputting the the proxy uh, for this I'm going to be turning these uh, these these sequences off. I just want to see the sort of the principal photography uh, for the uh, for the conforming process, but uh, that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit down the way. Um, if I in fact if I just turn these off and we just sort of scrub through uh, track one, we can see that we go from that title sequence there into this section here, which is a lift from the animatic, um, a bit more from the animatic. There's a little bit of green screen there of the of the character sort of pushing a button or pushing part of the screen, and then we get into the principal photography. We work our way through the principal photography. Uh, it looks like there's a there's a comp there. Then we come back to the triggering of this time machine, and then we go into this motion graphic, which is part of the teleportation process. Um, and then this is the plate that where where it's going to involve some effects to teleport the character into different locations and so on and so forth moving through so it's more of the same going all the way through the process okay if I pull the project panel across you can see that the media hopefully anyway yeah You can see the media is the use the 1024 by 576 proxy format with a 1.0 pixel aspect ratio. So we can see that in this particular case, all the proxy files have been used. And indeed, if we if I just sort of push that back and bring my uh, timeline back across here, um, if I go into the sequence settings, we can see the sequence settings 25 frames a second, 1024 by 576. So the actual sequence that to be rendered matches up. With, with the footage, which is typically what you'd, you'd expect from the editorial department. Okay, if we take a look at the um, at the root directory of our of our project, uh, we can see I've got this folder called Edit, and inside here, this is where the Premiere files are. In this particular case, there's a couple of iterations, but uh, but this is where the Premiere file is. So this is where this file lives, and this file is referencing the media from the proxy directories okay I suppose the um, at the risk of laboring the point literally everything that appears anywhere in this project or is used to create anything in this project is stored in this project directory at the operating system level this is absolutely pivotal to professional practice in uh, post-production Okay, so nothing that it, that it involves any in, in, that nothing that contributes to this project is outside of this setup. Okay, so onwards. Editorial will essentially provide the uh, the VFX team with two primary assets, and these assets are essential to conforming the project. Uh, these two assets are a full edit decision list or an EDL file, or series of EDL files, and an offline edit. Okay, so just to explain these very briefly, the EDL is basically a script-based version of the edit. Um, 
and this can be used to, to transfer edits between different non-linear editing applications even if they've been, been built on different platforms such as Windows, Macs, Linux etc. But more specifically to our case what the EDL provides us is it provides us with a tool that we can use to reconstruct this edit inside the conforming software which is Nuke Studio and that's what we're going to be doing a little bit later on in this tutorial series. Okay, the offline edit, which is uh, which is basically a low resolution render of the final edit sequence, and this is used in the conforming process to check the edit against the same version that's been produced here in Premiere. Because the edit's been signed off by the director, the producer, the client, etc., it's critical that this is replicated perfectly. So I'm going to go through the process for exporting the EDLs. Uh, if we come in here, you can see that I've got a folder in here called EDL which I'm going to use to uh, to populate the EDL files and I've got an offline folder uh, folder ready to capture my low resolution render from the uh, fr from Premiere. Okay, I'll just drag that onto my second monitor and uh, we're ready to start. So we are starting by exporting the EDLs for this project. Okay, so this is a simple process. We go to File, Export, and in it, you can see that there's a couple of EDL processes. We can we can export AAF, we can export Final Cut Pro XML, and we've got our EDL format. All of these sort of propagate in slightly different ways, but I'm going to keep things basic, and I'm going to stick with the EDL format because this is typically how even now how we receive uh, how we receive EDLs uh, for Nuke Studio. So I'm going to choose this option. This is going to bring up this dialog. Um, and you can see that, um, and you can see it's it's arbitrarily giving it a title, um, and you can see that there's a bunch of uh, parameters here that we can check, check on and off. So we definitely want to include the video and audio levels. I'll I'll retain the original site source file name, so I'll leave that checked on as well. And any transitions, and there are some transitions in this sequence, dissolves, etc. So I will uh, I'll include transitions involved in that. Sound roll, sound time code, can include that as well, um, and yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so onto the tracks to export. You can see that uh, it, the EDL format only provides one video track, um, and we know already that we've got three video tracks. What that means basically is that we have to output a video track for each of our tracks. So we'll be doing this three times. And we can see that we've got a bunch of audio tracks of which I only really need to export um, a couple. One for, because we know that we've got audio, we've got two channels of audio. Okay, so I'm going to start by exporting my first video track. So you can see that I can choose my video tracks. You can see I've got four in my timeline, so it's given me four options. I'm just going to choose video one, and I'm going to say OK. And now I'm going to save this into my EDL folder. And I'm just going to call this... V01, so it's the it's, so I know it's video track one, and I'll save that, and it's an instantaneous process. If I come there, you can see that that's already been brought in. Um, open with, let's just have a, a little look at this. Okay, I know it's cut off a little bit at the bottom, but you can kind of see what an EDL process works like. So it's essentially it's taking all the metadata from the edit. So it's taking all the clip points, all the time codes it's referencing. It's telling us which clip it's referencing. Um, you can see that there's, it's referencing a cross dissolve there. So it's working out that a cross dissolve and it's working out the timings of that. So this is universal data essentially, which Final Cut, Avid Media, um, Nuke Studio, they all understand this format and they can interpret this. Okay, so I won't I won't revisit that again, but that's just what a, a, an EDL looks like. Okay, so I'll just do that two more two more times. So again, select my sequence, export EDL. This time I'm going to export my video track two. So I'm just going to call this VO2, and that that'll pick up all the tracks that are all the clips that are on this track. Same again, just for the one track, just for the one clip that's on track three, uh, export EDL, change that to video three, and call it vo3.edl. 
and one last one for the audio. I could have attached the audio to one of the one of the video ones, but I thought it would be good to uh, do this as a separate. So EDL, and I'm setting the video this time to none, and I'm turning my audio channel one and audio one channel two into uh, in, into these, and I'm going to say OK to that. And this is going to be a a one dot edl. So if I drag my subfolder across again, you can see they are all now populated inside the edl folder. Okay, we've got an offline folder here which is yet to receive a file, so we'll do this now. So all I need to do in this particular case is output this as a low resolution video. I'm going to turn off the uh, the tracks one and two, so all we see in this is the principal photography, and where there isn't any principal photography, we see the clips from the animatic. That's all. Uh, that's all that's going to be needed for the conforming process. Okay, so simple export here. Just go to export media this time. Um, offline media is present in this, so that's okay. Um, and this is bringing up the export dialog. I'm just going to use the H.264, which is the uh, which is a very good compression format, and I'm just going to match the source, which means it'll it'll create a video that's 1024 by 576. Um, I'm exporting the video and the audio, although the audio is not necessarily necessarily um, required for this. Uh, I'm just going to choose the location, so that's going to go into the offline folder, and I'm just going to call this edit. Um, proxy and say OK and now I just hit the export button and let the clip render out I'll just pause the clip pause the, the capture sorry and I'll come back in a moment OK that rendered out incredibly quickly but then I am using a really low resolution file we can see is the red is the edit proxy sat here and we can see as I scrub through this is a, we can see the resolution is is uh, is what it is but we can see that this is giving me great reference for timing and so on and so forth so this will prove to be a great resource when we get into Nuke Studio so that's it for this part of the tutorial process so all it leaves me to do really is just to save my Premiere file and close it down so the next tutorial I'll be uh, reopening Nuke Studio and we'll be bringing in the uh, the EDL and uh, and conforming it bringing in the uh, linking it to the media and then bringing it back up to full resolution and then checking it against that reference video that we just rendered out there okay so I hope you found that useful